Yeah, here we go. Tell me up in my headphones. Yeah. Look. You are now flying. Look. 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 They don't want to smoke now. They don't want to smoke. They don't want to smoke now. They don't want to smoke. They don't want to smoke now. They don't want to smoke. Been about the power. You can call me ghost. I've been in a maze for seven days. He saw running plays. I left the stage. He ain't got no answers, they killed the Panthers. Now the puppets back and we ain't taking risks. My leaders type of bitches, they gon' marvel when my cap come. And if he got two readers, it's just like he busting two guns. Y'all falling up for suckers, and that's why y'all look like dum dums. And if you speak in Hebrew, then just know we finna quack off. We Debo, teach your black like Nino. The sheep and lost, we finna fish, I guess we find an ego. Y'all be bigger than placebos, throwing shots like Debo. And if we ever take a shot, just know that it's a free throw, it's a free throw. No smoke now, they don't want the smoke. They don't want the smoke now, they don't want the smoke. They don't want the smoke now, they don't want the smoke. Been about the power, you can come and go. Trying to stop with me, boy. What you thought this shit was sweet, boy? We be cheating like Messiah. Give me that and no for dire. He gon' set this place on fire, they can set up his empire. They be high, switching up like the survivor. I'm a soldier. On my holster. I wanna build you up, but if you stop, then I'm a bulge. But I'd rather keep it kosher, like I told you. Give our praises to Jehovah. Break it, sit on my own. Let the tape while we take over. We take over. They don't want the smoke now. They don't want the smoke. They don't want no smoke now. They don't want no smoke. They don't want the smoke now. They don't want the smoke. Been about the power. You can call me ghost. They don't want the smoke now. They don't want the smoke. They don't want the smoke now. They don't want the smoke. The smoke now, they don't want the smoke. smoke. They don't want the smoke. You can't. Can. Snap it to the chains, bro. Boy, mold like Django. Keep it clean and like Lego. Vanity, vanity, what was our vanity? Lord, give me power to burn out my enemies. Vanity, vanity, what was our vanity? Wisdom like Solomon, fight like the Maccabees. They don't want no smoke now, they don't want no smoke. They don't want the smoke now, they don't want the smoke. They don't want the smoke now, they don't want the smoke. In the back of you can call me ghost. Mic check, mic check. Mic check, we good? Check, check. All pray to the most high. Officer DeWater, IUIC Mobile. Officer Jeremiah. Soldier Apollos. So all pray to the most high. We fill it in for Captain Joel. All pray to the most high for Man Up, Man Up Mondays. So we got a man up. Now, hold on. What, the, what I named the class? Because it's a short notice. I forget. It was uh, get rid of the 11 out of both of your houses. Yeah. Get rid of 11 out of both of your houses. What I mean by that is what? We get the 11 out of our house. We get the 11 out of our cars. We get the 11 out of whatever we got possession of, right? But let's not forget to get the 11 out of ourselves. You understand what I'm saying? Real quick, let's start off with verse. Because if we don't, right? Matter of fact, get Ephesians 5. We're going to start with Ephesians 5. You can start at verse 1, I think. Read verse Ephesians 5 and verse 1. We got to get the living out our house. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as their children, and walk in love as Christ also have loved us. So we got to walk in these commandments. Come on. And have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. Hey, that's, our, that's supposed to be our end goal right there. We're supposed to be preparing ourselves for a sweet Savior. Meaning what? We're supposed to be getting the blemishes out. Hold that. Romans 12, real quick. Let's prove that. We're supposed to be giving ourselves as a sweet Savior. We're supposed to be a sacrifice to God. But in order to be that sacrifice to God, it's something we just, just like the priest, right? It's just, it's like symbolic or twofold. As far as the priest, right? The priest just couldn't grab any old um, lamb or goat and just do what he want to do. He got spots and blemishes on it. He just can't grab. No, 
He's supposed to be in pure, no spots, no blemish. So today we're supposed to be working on what? Getting the spots out of us, getting this living out of us, right? So that we could be that ultimate pure sacrifice, that a sweet savior unto the Lord. Now, watch this. We would read it. The book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves, present your bodies a living sacrifice. So there we go. We're supposed to present our bodies a living sacrifice. What? Meaning what? We're supposed to be without spot, without blemish, without, we shouldn't be lame. You know what I'm saying? We shouldn't be maimed, lame, none of those things. We're supposed to be purging ourselves every day. We're supposed to be purging ourselves, you know? So I know it's easier said than done because, hell, it ain't like, matter of fact, you check, make sure, the, 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 let me make sure, let me get on here, make sure everybody here. We last time we had problems. We good or that, no volume? Let me get it to it. Hold on one second. Excuse me, y'all. One second, one second, one second, one second. Just want to make sure we on point. You know what I'm saying? I'll pray to my IT team, you know, this pass over, so we're going to do things right. You know what I'm saying? We're going right, to pop right. this thing off right, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? Well, let me check. Let me see what's going on here. Can y'all hear me? Uh, just put uh, why, if you can hear me. If you can't hear me at all, just put no. Let me see. Let me check with Let me check with the people on Facebook real quick before we proceed. Just hit why for, ye uh, for yes, hit in for no. Okay, the sister Sarah said, yeah. Adam said, yeah. Okay, so we in good business. Two or three, there we go. Sister Shonda. All right, I'll, let, I'll pray to the most high. All right, so now, like I said, read that again. Yes, sir. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So we're supposed to present our bodies a living sacrifice, meaning what? We're supposed to be on point. We're supposed to be on point. For the Lord, we we meaning what? We should never stay the same. We should never get to the truth and we should and we stay the same. If you've been the two, three years, four years, there's no way you're gonna be the same from year four or um or when you first started, it shouldn't be the same. You should be growing. And if you're not growing, you got to identify why you're not growing. You know what I'm saying? You gotta identify where is the leaven because evidently it's messing you up. Now watch this read. Holy, acceptable unto God. We supposed to be what? Holy, we supposed to be holy. Get the precept for holy real quick. You mean that? Let's just prove all things. Then we gonna get we gonna get rolling. The book of Romans chapter seven and verse twelve. Wherefore the law is holy. Hey, put the YouTube the YouTube link on Facebook. They're asking for the YouTube link on Facebook. We got the YouTube up. We had problems last time with YouTube. Make sure we get the YouTube correct this time. Go ahead, read that again. Wherefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy. So the law is holy. So we're supposed to be keeping the laws. You already know, like some tell us, you know what I'm saying, it convert us. You know what I'm saying? So it changes us. So evidently, you're not keeping the laws. <laughs> if you're not growing, you're not keeping the laws. Then That's just the bottom line on it. Go ahead. Wherefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. So that will keep us holy. Go back to Romans and then we're going to go back to Ephesians. Just setting, set, just setting a foundation right now. Read. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's our reasonable service. Bro, that's supposed to be automatic. That's supposed to be a, like, I have no choice but to do this. Why is our reasonable service? He didn't have to wake us up. You could have been banging the tambourine in the church. You could have been putting all your little hard-earned money into the collection plate. Hey, you supposed to been tied every single week. You sisters, you know y'all be giving that bread up. Sisters be giving that bread up like a mud running around the church. You feel me? That would have been you. You know you banging that, that tambourine in church. You already know how you was rocking. That brother, bald head, bald face, you know what I'm saying? With your little tie on, you feel me? Using that thing to use our bag. You feel me? It, whatever, whatever wife said, that's what's go. Come on, babe. Let's go. All right. All right. I'll let y'all later now. Mm. You know, hey, that just that, that is what it is. So he ain't have to wake us up. So he said, look, it's a reasonable service for us to do what we do, man. Nobody should have to beg nobody. Another note, sidebar. Nobody should have to beg nobody to do no work of the Lord. Why? Because it's your reasonable service, bro. You should be wanting to do something for the Lord. 
Because when you was in the world, you was wide open. You was on a hundred. When you was in, a, that tell you that tell you that in Romans, if you was going hard in the world for sin, you owe the Lord. Now, see, now I gotta go there. I gotta prove it just real quick. It was Romans six. I gotta prove that real quick, man. I'm be, don't let me jump all over the place, y'all. I know I'm jump, man. <laughs> Romans six. That just prove that if you went hard in the world, because. You shouldn't have to beg nobody in the truth to do no works. You should want to do the work because it's your reason for serving. Yeah, you could, you still should be still asleep. Uh, get that in Romans. I'm gonna get to. I don't want to read the whole thing because I I take all day. Romans six and jump to verse twenty. This is the book of Romans chapter six and verse twenty. For when ye were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. So there you go. When you was a uh, uh, servant for sin, when you was waking up in the morning smoking a blunt. Uh, midday smoking a blunt, uh, afternoon smoking a blunt, um, nighttime smoking a blunt, before you go to bed smoking a blunt. Now, that's what you was doing. Or you was, hey, or add, the, add, add whoremonger in that, add being a whore in that, add being drunkenness in that, add being uh, filthiness in that. All these things, we was doing it. We was straight read it again. We was what? For when you were the servants of sin. You were free from righteousness. We was a servant for sin. We got. We was dedicated to smoke a blunt. You was dedicated to do some drug pop pills. You was dedicated to that. And one ain't gonna stop you from smoking it neither. Nothing was gonna stop you. The weed man that had no weed, you gonna find the weed. If you couldn't find no pills, you was gonna get the pills. If you if if you ain't had no car to go see Keisha, you were gonna make a way to go see Keisha. You gonna bomb a ride to go see Keisha. You gonna uh. Man, I mean, I had a partner. I got to be for real. Man, brother drove all the way to, we were in Mississippi. Brother drove all the way, what was it, Nebraska somewhere? Brother drove all the way to Nebraska for some. Yo, I ain't lying. So you can't tell me when you come in this truth, you know what I'm saying, you um you can't give it all or you can't at least be your reasonable service to want to serve the Lord. That should be a reasonable service, bro, all that wickedness we did. I'm trying to pay the Lord back. You know what I'm saying? I can't pay the Lord back. I suppose been dead plenty of times. But now I can't, I ain't gonna be slack. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna be slack. You ain't gotta beg me to do no work. I'm gonna do the work. You know what I'm saying? So that's how you should be, brothers and sisters. Nobody should have to beg you to read the chapters. Nobody should have to beg you to watch uh the video. Nobody should have to beg you to take notes. You should want to do these things. And then in doing these things, you um it builds your endurance up that you can get the kingdom of heaven. We want to live forever. So we got to purge this leaven out of our house, not our physical house, but our house spiritually that we do that our spirit dwell in. We got to get the leaven out of that. Just just don't be walking around here now. Oh, tell my oh, that's leaven in that. Reading the back of the um the box, making sure ain't no leaven in it. Uh, um, doing all what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Reading reading all the ingredients. Oh, ain't no ain't no rising um ages in this. Well, you got to be doing yourself like that. You got to be like, damn, ain't no wickedness in me. And it ain't just you, hell, it's all of us got to stand on that. You understand what I'm saying? We all got to stand on that. Uh, finish that. Read, read it again, and I'm, I'm going to jump back. But read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 20. For when ye were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. You was, a, you was away from righteousness. You, you was in a church you thought you was in righteousness. That was wickedness. You know what I'm saying? We was pure evil. Read. What fruit had he then in those things? What, it said, he said, what fruit do you have? From being in the world, not a damn thing. Some brothers come in with packages, some sisters come in with packages. So ain't no good fruits you coming in with. You come, you, you got pregnant by uh Joe in the world, and he 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 ain't no he ain't no father at all. You understand what I'm saying? Or vice versa, you didn't got you didn't got Keisha pregnant, and she busting your ties out and all type of wickedness. Now ain't no profit. Read that again. What fruit? Had you then in those things? Yeah, what fruit have you in smoking weed every day? None but a loss of memory bank. Uh, popping pills, all this porn. None but messing you up. Breathe. Whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. The end of those things is death. That's why we gotta purge ourselves. So if you was going hard in the world, you got to be. You got to make this your reasonable service. That's the point I was trying to make. I told I'd be i will be stuck on something, man. Let me get let me get back. Where I was Ephesians. Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter five and verse one. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us. Come on. And have given himself for us, 
an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior. Uh huh. But fornication and all uncleanness. So there we go. So all of us who's in the world, so let's not act like we don't know what fornication is or we don't know how fornication feels. You've been in the two two years, you act like you don't know what fornication is. You know what fornication is. So, so you know I already know what's going on. You know that brother, uh, you know when that brother trying to get with you. Don't act like you don't know. Th that's why we got to get this living out from among us. Because look, Satan trying to get through any door. You got to look at it like this, right? Satan trying you your house. I'm I'm gonna go physical first, then I'm gonna go spiritual, right? Physically, right? You have a house and you do it dwell in your house. You got a lot of windows in your house. You got a few doors in your house. So Satan is on the outside trying to find out wherever he can come in. Did you leave this window unlocked? Did you leave the back patio door unlocked? Uh, did you leave the garage door open? He trying to go through the damn dog um, hole. He trying to go wherever he get in at, he going to try to get in. So therefore, you got to examine yourself and make sure your, just like the living we be doing Make sure reading the back of it Damn ain't no living in here That's how we got to look at ourselves Like damn am I wicked You know what I'm saying Am I, I'm, weak, I'm weak over here Let me build this Let me build this up You know what I'm saying I'm lacking over here Let me tighten up over here And you know when you go to slipping Every man know when he go to slipping As far as uh, Watch this Lust You know when you go to slipping You can go on Walmart Wherever you going And you begin to be like this here Trying to look You know where you at You know you weak because when you're strong, you can walk past something. You be like, yeah, she bad, but damn it, I ain't looking. And then you keep on pushing. You ain't like ain't nothing happen. But when you weak, you like this. Then you want to get a double take. So you already know where you at. Now you be like, damn, I got, let me, I'm, I'm weak as hell. Now I got to make sure I get back in these scriptures. Or scripture should be pondering in your head. They ain't pondering in your head. Either you're not building yourself up or, or whatever. So you lacking somewhere because we're supposed to be having a whole arm of God on us. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying even you sisters, you sisters, you see brothers walking, you see that dude, you know he to you he 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 all let to you in your mind. And you looking, you looking to you trying to get his attention, you trying to you know, you know women slick. Women 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 do things, women do things different from us. Women just to try to get in the man's way so he can speak to her. You know what I'm saying? Women with well, I don't know, see, these women aggressive to hell now, boy. They pull up on your head now, boy. <laughs> hey, these women pull up on you. See, what's your name? <laughs> so you know what? I take that back. Women aggressive as hell too now. I'm serious. I done seen the woman pull up on you like see, what's happening? <laughs> like see, what's happening? You going what you want my number? As a matter of fact, hey, you gonna don't even worry about it. Like, damn, sister, you know what I mean? So I already know it's wicked as hell out here now. Sister, no, I ain't lying. The sister said, right. You already know, Adam, you know that's for real. With that Shonda. Y'all know I ain't playing. These sisters pull up on you. Pull up on you now. Now, where am I? Verse 3. I won't go ahead. Verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you. Or see, he said, let that not be once named among you. Many get rid of it. Watch this. Keep reading. As becoming saints. It's becoming what? Saints. So we're trying to become those saints. Here's the patience of the saints. Like, we got to continue to fight and fight and fight and fight. You know what I'm saying? Until we leave here. It ain't going to never be a point where we make it and that's it. That never happened. Matter of fact, let's prove that. Give me 2 Corinthians. It ain't going to never be a, a point where we uh, think we ain't never got to uh, we ain't never got to fight. Give me that in uh, is it first? Hold on, hold on. I think it's first Corinthians. About the uh, hold on one second, y'all. Bear with me one second. I think I'll be getting it mixed up. Seven. Hold on. Uh, we're gonna make sure we got all we gotta fight. Not that one. No, it is second. I'm a bad second. Mm, let's see. Let's throw in the mix. Is it second Corinthians five? 12 and 7, I'm backwards, yeah, 12 and 2nd. Showing you we ain't going to never get to a point where we just can relax and kick our feet up. Ah, I ain't never got to worry about porn no more. You was a damn lie. I ain't never got to worry about lust no more. I ain't never got to worry about being covetous. No, nah, ain't no way. You ain't no kicking no feet up and thinking you good. You got to always fight. Now watch this. Read what you got. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12 and verse 7. And lest I shall be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was also given there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, 
to buffet me. So everybody got that thorn in the flesh, whatever that vice is, or, or, or a plethora of thorns in the flesh. Some of us ain't just got one thing. It's about two, three things that you're going to have to battle till you die. Especially when the ones that was deep in the world, these things, you was know you was deep in covetous, you know, uh, or you was deep in, uh, you was a whoremonger, you was a whore, you was, you know what I mean, that just was you. Now, or you uh, got that uh, sodomite spirit, you know what I'm saying, that you're going to have to, you're going to have to fight this thing the rest of your life. You can never get to a point where you're like, oh, that's it. That'll never happen. It ain't no one scripture going to get you there. That that's just gonna be a, a um you always examining yourself and um walking circumspect in this truth. That's the only thing gonna get you there. Keep reading. Lest I should be exalted above measure. He said, "Look, unless I've been exalted, if I ain't had nothing to 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 buffet me, to to challenge me, then I'd be above measure. I'd be on. I'm, I'm straight. I'm good. I ain't. I'm, I can kick my feet up." I'd be all in pride and everything. Think about it if you ain't one dealing with that. You you can relate to no brother. Hell, that's why Christ said he had to be made like his brethren. So he can what? He can feel what's going on. He can know what's going on. He can be like, damn, that's that's some temptation over there. I can feel that. I can feel that for my brother. I can feel that for my brother. I can feel that for my sister. I understand that. But imagine if you didn't have none of that. You can walk around, I'm high and mighty. Uh, oh, ain't nothing never wrong with me. What you going through? I ain't going through nothing. What you going through, brother? <laughs> like what you going through i'm good you feel me nah that ain't gonna never happen you ain't gonna never happen keep reading verse read eight. It again yes sir verse seven unless i should be exalted above measure lest you be on your high you lest you be high and mighty through the abundance of the revelations there was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of satan to buffet me lest i should be exalted above measure come on for this thing i besought the lord thrice that it might depart from me and he said unto me, my grace, is, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. He said, my strength is made perfect in your weaknesses. So we're going to have weaknesses, brothers and sisters. We're going to have that. We're going to have that. We got to battle. We got to battle. But he said he there, though. He, he, but you're going to have to work it. He ain't finna just drive. You know how they say Jesus take the wheel? No, no. You're you going to drive, homie. You're going to be a shotgun with you. you. You driving, homie. You think you want the Lord to take the, to my Jesus to take the wheel. So what, you can do nothing? Right. Oh, here you go, Jesus. Take the wheel. I'm chilling. Hell no. You're going to be driving. You're going to have to whip. You know what I'm saying? He's going to help, help you along the way. Read. That's it. No, sir. Go ahead. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. You got to glory in your affirmities that, that you know that you know, Christ is on me. Christ is with me through this because I can't do it by myself. I need help. So now, we have to get to a point to examine ourselves. Some of us in this truth, right? Give me James 1 and uh, 22. The reason why I'm going over there said, the class is, get the leaven out of your house. Hold on, I, I forgot what I said. Get the leaven out of both of your houses. We getting the living out of our house, you know, we already got that. Hopefully, we can already got that at your house, physical house. But most of us ain't spiritually examine ourselves to get the living out of us. It take a man or it take a woman to really pull up in the mirror and really examine yourself and fix yourself and apply it. Everybody else be faking. They just look in the mirror and keep pushing. You know what I'm saying? But it take a real man to look in the mirror and say, you know what, I'm full of sh I'm full of S. You know what I mean? I'm straight BS. You know what I'm saying? I, I lack right here, bro. I'm I'm really I'm really jacked up. It take a man to do that. Now once you begin to do that, now you on another level now. Remember the man on the cross? Remember the man on the cross said, um what did he say exactly? I wanna cause he he confessed. I I want to deal with confession real quick because that's a that's a big part of looking in the mirror, right? Um, I'm going to have to get that real quick. I got to get that. Let me get that real quick. Go to Luke 23 and 40. Luke 23 and 40. Let's get that real quick. Because a big part of, let me see how can I word it. A big part of changing or getting the leaven out of yourself is you have to be big and bold enough to confess your faults. If you if you are not a person that you don't even confess your fault to your spouse, 
you in a long you in for a long ride. Cause if you ain't even confessing your your uh sisters don't even want to confess their fault to their lords, sister, I kinda hate it for you really confessing to the father anything. Cause you you some I I remember some being in relationships in the world, this sidebar for a minute. Sidebar, right? When you're in a relationship in the world and you have a partner that never confess that they wrong, they always blaming you, that's the worst thing ever to deal with. So now, just think about that because you know you, you may with that person or you may encounter that person. You don't even want to deal with them. So how do you think the Lord feel when you don't even come pull up to him and be like, hey, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm X, Y, Z. You know, I'm jacked up. You know what I'm saying? I need help. I need your mercy. Help me get through this. Help me get built up. You don't never do that. You in a bad shape. So now watch this. Uh, read what you got. Yes, sir. This is the book of Luke, chapter 23 and verse 40. But the other answering rebuked him, saying. Start at verse. Um, 30. Where, 8. The book of Matthew, I mean, the book of Luke, chapter 23 and verse 38. And a subscription also was written over him in letters of Greek. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong book. I'm in 24. My bad. Uh, Start at verse. Start at 40. Yes, sir. This is the book of Luke, chapter 23 and verse 40. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do is not thou fear God, seeing thou thou art. That thou now nah, thirty nine, verse thirty nine, and one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying. So he's trying to rail on the Lord. This dude, this brother here, railing on the Lord, going in, trying to go in on the Messiah. Big dummy, read. If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering. So he said, if you be Christ, then you save you save us then. Since you talking about you the Messiah, will you save us then? Read. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do it not, do it not thou. So the other like, nigga, you crazy. I'm just gonna put in our let me put it sidebar. Let me I'm finna put it in our terminology today. Now read it again. Yes, sir. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do it not thou fear God? Nigga, you crazy. You don't feel God? Seeing thou art in the same condemnation. Bro, we all jacked up. We all bro, we up, we 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 supposed to be put to death, bro. Come on. And we indeed justly. For we Hold on. Let's read that part again. And we indeed justly. So guess what he doing? Confessing. He he taking, excuse me, he taking accountability of his actions. He's like, hey, indeed justly, we supposed to be up here. But but Christ, he don't supposed to be up here. We supposed to be up here. We do hey, we we did we did the crime. Go ahead. And we indeed justly. For we receive the due reward of our deeds. You see that? We receive this. Lord, I, whatever you got for me, Lord, I receive this. You know what I'm saying? I ain't ducking it. I'm taking accountability of my actions. Sisters, pay attention. Brothers, pay attention. Take accountability for your actions. Read it again. And we indeed justly. For we receive the due reward, due reward of our deeds. The due reward is what? I deserve this. I ran that. I ran the check up for this sin. I done ran it up. So guess what? I'm due to get my behind put to death. I'm due for that. Go ahead. But this man have done nothing. But to Christ me. ain't did nothing, man. Read. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. You see what he doing? So he already took accountability, and he said, Look, Lord, what? Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He said, Remember me, Lord. Remember me at the cross. Remember me right here, Lord. I hey, I supposed to be up here getting put to death. I take the calibrity for that, and I believe in you because I said, "Look, remember me." In order for 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 me to tell you, remember me. That means I believe in what you got going on. I believed in the works I seen what you was doing. I just was, you know, I got caught up in my my sin, but I believe. Read verse forty three. And Jesus said unto him, "Verily I say unto thee." Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. He said, right. You believe and you confess and you took accountability. So, pastor, sit your behind down to my, oh, you want to be like the man at the cross. The man at the cross confessed. The man at the cross took accountability for his sin and his judgment. 
So don't be trying to use them. Tell my oh, I'm on my deathbed, and you gonna you ain't gonna make it nowhere. Talking about you, hey, oh, you can just do whatever the hell you want to do. Then you're on your deathbed, and now you, the Lord's supposed to let you in because you said, "Lord Jesus, Amen." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, hey man, we wish it. Hey, who don't wish it was that easy? Lord, thank you, Jesus, Amen. And then we good, man. You, bro, man, look. Hey, come out the church, man. For real, for real, bro. We messed up, man. We messed up in them churches, bro. I'm just, I can't. We can't even say it no other way, man. You, hey, you know, we all came out of the churches. So look, if this your first time listening, man, go examine this. You know what I'm saying? Because think about it. The man confessed. He said, "Look, I'm supposed to be up here getting put to death," but then he said, "Lord, but I believe." Like, you know, what I'm saying, uh, "I want to be with you. Remember me, in, remember me when you go to paradise." And the Lord said, "Okay, I got you." So, but then on top of that, the Lord, that brother had to be following the Lord. Now, one more real quick. Give me Romans 10 and 9. Let's show you what that man did. Real quick, let's show you what that brother did. Romans 10 and 9. And you get Acts 19 and 18. This is the book of Romans, chapter 10 and verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. You see that? You got to do what? Read it from the top. That if. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth. So, brothers and sisters, we got to learn how to confess with our mouth. Hey, I remember when I first came in, in the truth, I think um, I think it was Captain Shemaya when we had a study circle. Uh, it was way back. I was just probably a soldier. I think they was like officers at the time. And, you know, I don't know how to pray, you know what I'm saying, or how to confess sincerely. You'll be in your the Christian church messes up because we'll just have that stuff in our head. Be like, yeah, mm, no, you got to open your mouth. Because when you open your mouth and say it, you realize you got the dummy for what you did. You realize you ain't hitting on nothing. Yeah, Lord, forgive me for my lust. Forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for being a adult. Forgive me for being a murderer. Forgive me. Lord, I was a murderer. Then, you, then they really hit you like, damn, I'm really, I'm really jacked up. Damn, I was out there that bad, Lord, that I, 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 I went, I fell that far. That I, I'm standing up before you confessing because I'm jacked the hell up. You know what I'm saying? It hit different when you say it aloud. That's whispering to yourself. That ain't about nothing. Open your mouth and confess. Read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, that shall be saved. Now, read what you got real quick. The book of Acts chapter 19, verse 18. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. So if you believe many that what? And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. So when you believe, it said you confessed. And then it said what? And showed their deeds. Show your works behind it. You're not just tongue wrestling as we used to say. you just talking. You just can't talk. Now, get that James 1 22. Yes, sir. Get the leaven out of your, your house, which is your temple. Get the leaven out. So you can got all the leaven out your car. You done vacuumed. You done did all that. That's how you're supposed to be with your spirit. Examine your spirit. Bring the vacuum cleaner out and vacuum all that stuff that you swept under the rug. All them grudges you got uh, for that sister. You swept that under the rug, but you just to clean your car, though. You just to vacuum your car. But the Lord set us up cold-blooded on it. <laughs> the Lord set us up cold-blooded for these feasts. Boy, you got to get yourself right. Ain't no way you can be walking around still having a grudge or hatred towards your brother or sister. All these feast days we go through, all the Sabbaths, all these feast days we go through, and it's somebody like this, get the leaven out. And we know the leaven is sin. So he said, get the leaven out of your house. Get the leaven out of your car. And you vacuum, you sweeping the house, mopping the house. You reading the back of the ingredients. Uh, uh, you vacuuming the car out. So he said, Lord, surely you can do all that for the physical. Surely you can do your spirit like that. Surely you can do your spirit like that. Go ahead. This is the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So we got to be what? But be ye doers of the word. And not hear us only. So we just can't hear this word. Come on. Deceiving your own self. You're fooling yourself, man. Read. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, 
he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. So he is like a man beholding. Oh, I got something real quick. I'm finna send to you over there. I just thought about it. I got, I got something on that. Hold up. Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse, verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his face, beholding his natural face in a glass. Behad beholding his natural face in the glass. So he's looking in the mirror. And what happened? For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgiveth what manner of man he was. So that's just like I wake up in the morning, uh, uh, crust all in my eyes, not on my nose, crust on my lips. And I look in the mirror and I just, I see myself, I see all the crust in my mouth, see the snot on my nose, see the boogers in my eyes. And, I, and then I just walk straight out the door. Godly. Godly. So that's the same thing you do with the scriptures. You see what you need to fix with the scriptures, but you don't fix it. Mm, mm, mm. But you fix it in the physical. Some of you sisters, you're going to make sure you, you got that makeup on right. You're going to make sure you got that foundation on just right so you can powder and do the little rest of the little stuff you do. You know what I'm saying? You're going to make sure that when you're looking in the mirror, you're making sure you get that right. But the same way you do that, you got to be able to do it in the spiritual Hey, play this video. Some of y'all, some of us be like this in the, the scared of the mirror. Watch this, y'all. You big and bold. You old big silverback, brother. You old silverback, brother. You almighty angels, brother. Watch this. But you scared to look yourself in the mirror. Watch this, here. You got OB? All right, let me see what you got. So this bold old silverback right here. Like, hell with that damn mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, he ain't dealing with that mirror, man. Look at this, man. Man, hell no. Look at that. Hey, I ain't finna deal with that mirror. <laughs> oh, man, look at this, bro. He would not look in the mirror. Hey, hey, fast forward, speed it up. Go on to the end of it. He gonna finally go to the end of it. Some, it's some, some, hey, some of, some of y'all brothers and sisters like this, man, for real, that take forever to look in the mirror. It's always somebody else's fault. <laughs> he like, what the, oh, that was me, that's me like that, that's me. See, that's me right there. <laughs> Hey, so don't be like that silverback, right? Hey, that's a silverback. Don't be like that, man. Don't be like that silverback right there, man. You know what I'm saying? Do not be like that. You can't be like that. Hold on one second. I'm like, oh, my phone tripping. Okay, there you go. There you go. So don't be like that, man. You got to look in the mirror, man. You have to look in the mirror. Watch this, read. Verse 25. But whoso look up into the perfect law of liberty. So you looking into the perfect law of liberty. Come on. And continue therein. He being not a forgetful hearer. So you ain't going to forget what you hear. But a doer of the work. You're going to end up doing. You're going to end up correcting or getting that living out. Right? This man shall be blessed in his deed. You're going to be, see that? You're going to be what? This man shall be blessed in his deed. You're going to be blessed in what you're doing. You understand what I'm saying? But when you want to duck that mirror, you don't want to fix yourself. That ain't, ain't going to work out well for you. Now, let's see how do we get. Let me see. How can I say it? How do we get to that point? Because sometimes we might miss it. We might miss ourselves. We might not examine ourselves. And we might slip up. But guess what? Give me Proverbs 3 and 11, I think. Proverbs 3 and 11. This is the book of Proverbs. Chapter 3 and verse 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Uh-oh. Despise what? Despise not the chastening of the Lord. Come on. Neither be weary of his correction. So, it said, don't despise it. Um, because the Lord ain't said, hey, the, the water, you was wrong. No, man. The, most I ain't dealing like that. The Lord ain't dealing like that. He ain't, he ain't dealing with me. Guess who dealing with me? My brethren. My superiors. My peer, my um, peers. That's who going to be dealing with me. Give me Joel 5 and uh, 12. No, uh, 17. Let's see who deal with us. 
This we just book, want we want the correction. We want the medicine. Come on. This the book of Job, chapter five and verse seventeen. Behold, happy is the man whom God correct him. So God correct, like I said, God ain't came down and talked to you. Stop playing. Stop playing. You you left the Christian church now. Leave that doctrine over there at the Christian church. <laughs> Because your pastor would say all type of stuff that he talked to God. Man, please, God would have told you put a beard on your face if that's the case. He would have told you stop taking these full tide money if that's the case. Right. He would have told you Sunday ain't the Sabbath. Right. He would have told you to keep the Sabbath on Friday night to Saturday night sundown. If that was the case, he's dealing with you, right? Where well, he's going to tell you to keep the commandment if he was. But what, but we know that's, that's baloney. Read. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Now, let's see you doing the chastening of the Almighty. Get that in Proverbs uh, 5 and 11. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 5 and verse 11. And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh. Hold on, start at verse 12. Verse 12. And say, how have I hated instruction? Some people hate instructions. Don't tell me nothing. Don't tell me nothing. Come on. And my heart. Despise reproof and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. So read that again. Verse 13. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. Oh, so that's who correct us. That's who correct us. If you don't believe that, hold that. Go to uh, Sirach 45 last verse. We're going to see who correct us. We got to have this medicine, y'all. We got to get this leaven out of our temple. We got to get this leaven out of our house. Sirach 45, last verse. Yes, sir. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 45 and verse 26. God give you wisdom in your heart to judge his people. So, to do what? To judge his people in righteousness. So, in righteousness, that he said, look, it give my men to judge his people in righteousness. Come on. That they're good things. Be not abolished. He said, look, the reason why he's sending these men to judge you, or oh, sister, because sister going to correct you, not judge, but correct you. Come on. That they're good, that they're good things be not abolished. That your good things may not be abolished. What's your good things? That you can live forever. Right. So he's trying to have somebody correct you so that you don't miss the kingdom. Read. And that their glory may endure in forever. That they what? That their glory may endure forever. That your glory may endure forever. Now go back to Proverbs. So that's that's how we get the leaven out. Because we may miss it. We may get, we may slip. Because the, the scripture tell us we slip. But watch this. Get the, yeah, get that. Uh, I ain't been there a while. So rock 21 and uh, I think it's 7. We'll slip now. That's what I'm saying. We'll slip. We ain't just going to walk this thing and ain't going to slip. But watch this. So rock 21 and 7. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 21 and verse 7. An eloquent man is known far and near. So an eloquent man, he's known far or near. But a man of understanding. Come on. Nor when he slippeth. Uh-oh. Read that again. But a man of understanding. Nor when he slippeth. A man or a brother know when he's slipping. If you got understanding, you know when you off. You know when you slipping. So now nobody should have to judge you because you know why you're not ready to judge yourself. You done already beat, I just say into the Lord sending him to correct me, right? But if I'm a man of understanding, I know when I slip it, guess what? I didn't caught myself. You know what I'm saying? I didn't caught myself. Let me show you, that's a scripture too. First uh, Corinthians 11 and what, 31. First Corinthians 11 and 31. So you're going to know when you slip. A man of understanding know when he slip or a sister of understanding. She know when she's off. She know when she's slipping. Read. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 31. For if we judge, for if we would judge ourselves. So if we judge ourselves, if we always checking and examine ourselves, looking in the mirror, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastening of the Lord. See that? Oh man, that go all that flow all together what we just brought out. Read it again. Verse 32. But when but when we are judged, we are chastening of read, the Lord. Read 31 again. Verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves. If we were correct ourselves if we would look into the perfect what is it, liberty I'm, I'm butchering it if we would look into the perfect law of liberty and correct ourselves don't just um hear the scriptures and don't do them but if we hear it and do it correct ourselves fix ourselves then what we should not be judged we should not be judged nobody else got to pull up on me the lord ain't got to send nobody to pull up on me come on 
but when we are judged. But if I happen to slip, because a man do a man of understanding know when he slip, so I may have slipped. We are chastening of the Lord. And somebody else judge me, I am chastening of the Lord. I am corrected by the Lord. Why? So that I don't miss the kingdom. Because we all come out of the world. That stuff's still on us, bro. That stuff ain't just going nowhere. That stuff will hide and lay dormant for a while as if it's gone. Or like we say in the South, it'll play possum. It playing like it's dead, but it ain't dead. Um, where we at? Go back. This is more that. Keep going. That we should not be condemned with the world. Damn. We got to. Ooh, we. Man, that was heavy. We got to correct ourselves so we don't get put to death like this world going to get put to death. You done ran your you done ran in vain. You done did your you done did you done, you, done, you might well should have stayed out there party full time. You should have been a full time hoe. You should have been a full time dope dealer. You should have been a full time murderer. If that's the case, if you just gonna get in here then when somebody correct you, then you don't want to get corrected. Why don't you just stay out there and be a full time nigga? Just stay, just stay out there and be a full time nigga. If you don't want to be corrected, but those that want to be corrected. Take that lick on the chin, like yes, all praise. I gotta do better. I need to do better. Give me that in second of uh, Corinthians four. Second, matter of fact, let's get an example because I, I want to get some examples of covetousness, right? Um, let me see what's going on. Get uh, it's gonna be this gonna be we gonna go into some history. Uh, get the one in Second Kings. Is it five? I'm gonna deal with something real quick. We're gonna deal with covetousness real quick. Then we're gonna we're gonna matter of fact, we're gonna deal with a lot of we're gonna give a lot of examples of matter of fact, we get that one. For some reason, it just won't be to deal with some sisters, bro. Then get that um Jeremiah 44. Jeremiah 44. Because you sisters come in out of the world. You married to your Lord now, right? And you knew him in the world, you was married to him in the world, but you ran him in the world. You ran him when you was in a Christian church. That spirit's still on you. Jeremiah 44 and 14. Yes, sir. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 44 and verse 14. So that none of the remnant of Judah, which are gone into the land of Egypt, to sojourn there. Start at 15. Uh, yeah, 15. Verse 15. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods. So it said, read it again. Then all the men which knew that their wives. So the men that were... Say the, the couples that came in married in the world, the man knew that this ain't right with this Christian church crap. And he was getting walked all over. Sister, you was you had the pants on. You was unzipping and flipping. Right. <laughs> you was zipping and you was you was unzipping and flipping. You you were the king around here. You were the king in the house, right? And he knew that he was he was he wasn't in his his in his in his rightful place. He wasn't in his authority on what God created him to be because his world is upside down. And you went in your um, place and position where you're supposed to be. So now watch this, read. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods. They know they, you was in there with C.J. Bo in love with C.J. Bo. You were saying, I'm married to the Lord. You weren't saying you was married to him. Dang. The Lord of Jesus is the head of my No, your Lord is over your life. Right. Scripturally, the Lord is the Lord on this earth for you. Read. And all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, even in Pathros. A great multitude of women. Boy, you can imagine what they, they, run, they, they, no, they was running some. Read. And so Jeremiah is saying, as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever. So I, I pull that, let you know, sister, let y'all know. Sister, you got your Lord got to get in this right position. If you came in one month, two months, six months a year, you still got that spirit on you, sister, trying to run your husband. That spirit ain't left. As soon as he, ma he ain't making the decision as fast as you want it, because in the world, you want to make the decision right there in the death for him. No, he, he thinking about it. He pondering. He ain't finna make no move. He going to do what he going to do when he need to do it. Right now, he, getting, he being put it back in his rightful position. So it's a battle for you. You understand what I'm saying? You got to let that man be the man in the house. And don't say, well, he, he no, nah, I don't want to hear none of that. He going to get where he's supposed to be because these scripts are going to heal him. Now, watch this. So that's just an example. That's, that's an example of sisters making sure you get your spirit right. What you're supposed to be doing is Sirach 7 and 26, and then we're going to go to the coverages. We're going to deal with the sister first, then we're going to go with the coverages. 
We're going to give you the medicine to it. Sirach is it 7 to 26? Read that. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 7 and verse 26. Hast thou, hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, but give not, but give not thyself over to a light woman. So read that again. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Have a wife after your mind. Your the meaning the man, your mind got to be after that man's mind, not your own brain. You trying to run the show. Read. Forsake her not, but give not thyself. Over to a light woman. Go to Sirach 26 and 12 real quick. Dealing with the sisters, because we all, we all got that lemon still on us. This, this, we bringing the vacuum cleaning out, sister. This is what you call the vacuum cleaning. Meaning, well, we getting it into the crevices, which you try to hide, but you don't want to deal with. Watch this, read. Yeah. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 12. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he have found a fountain. And drink of every water near her. I didn't want that one, but that's a good scripture to read. Read it again. Yes, sir, verse 12. <laughs> she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he have found a fountain and drink of every water near her. And we know that ain't talking about no water. We already know they're talking about that's sex. I'm just going to be, that's just what that is. Oral. Come on. By every hedge will she sit down. She sit down by every hedge, meaning she'll, she'll let Tom, Dick, Harry, everybody get that. Breathe. And open her quiver against every rope. Come on, the grace of a the grace of a wife, the light of her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. Her discretion. Look up. Give me a discretion real quick. Let the people see what discretion is. So her discretion will do what? Verse thirteen. The grace of a wife, the light of her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. Her discretion will fatten his bones. Let's see what discretion is with fatten his bones. He read. Verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. A silent woman is a gift to the Lord. Them woman we read in Jeremiah wasn't silent. Right. Them women was, them women had, they were flipping. They was, if they had pants back then, they was uh uh unzipping and flipping. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They had the toilet seat up. You feel me? The, and, and the man had the toilet seat down. For real, though. The sister said, look, let me raise the toilet seat up. I'm the man around here. <laughs> for real, for real. Hey, uh, read that again. Hold on, you got, you got the definition? Put it on the screen for us to see. This, that's the right definition? All right, read that. Discretion. The quality of behaving. Or speaking in such Ooh, a way. Who is that? The quality. Just don't run past that. So, the quality of what? The quality of behaving. Man, you know, when you come out the world, sister, ain't no such thing as behaving. If you tell the sister, hey, behave. Behave? Nigga, you know what the hell you talking about? Behave. Calm down. Who is you to tell me? I ain't coming. Nothing down. Boy, you tell a sister that in the world. Lord, it's a fight. Calm down. Well, please. <laughs> so go ahead. The quality of behaving. Or speaking in such a way as to avoid causing. Ooh, wait a minute. It says speaking in a way to avoid what? Avoid causing. In other words, speaking in a way to avoid problems. Or don't want to be confrontational. Nah, uh-uh. Not, that ain't what the world produce. Hell no. The world produce women to be confrontational. They going to pull up on you and going to tell you something. I'm a, let me tell you a piece of my mind. No, nah, you ain't been telling me a damn thing. You feel me? No, nah, he ain't. Nah, uh That ain't. That ain't shaking like that. Read that again. Speaking in such a way as to avoid causing offense or revealing private information. Now you wonder why his chest bump be going around in the house. A man trying to get where he's supposed to be back, and the woman said, "Hell no, you gonna have to fight me for it." And sometimes it ain't just a, a verbal fight. It be physical altercation. Brother got a chest bump. It ain't no way. Uh, uh, ain't no way it's supposed to be that in your house, man. Ain't no way it's supposed to be that in your house. Of course, when you're in the truth, we know that. But in the world, that's what it is. It's confrontation. It's black eyes going around. It's somebody getting stabbed to death. Now she didn't shot him up because she didn't got beat up. Why? Because the world don't teach our women how to be women. The world teach our women how to be men and teach our men how to be women that's what the world teaches you know what i'm saying that's what the church teaches 
that's how that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? So when we come out of the world, sisters don't know how to um uh have a discretion. They don't know they don't know how to be discreet. They don't know how to be these things. They don't know how to have this spirit on them on how to avoid um conflict. They don't have that spirit. So you have to work on it. But we're bringing the vacuum cleaning out tonight so we can get all this stuff out. We can get the that, that Jeremiah 44 spirit out to our sisters. You know what I'm saying? This is what this is for. You know what I'm saying? This is what this is for. It's for healing. You know what I'm saying? We here, we love our people. We want our people to, to be uh prosperous in their marriage, to be successful in their marriage. Uh in general, you know, we want our nation to be whole. We all sick. We all got to get healed. We all got to go through things. It ain't just Oh, you going through it because you knew hell now. Nah, we still go through it even when we in this truth for a while. You know what I'm saying? We got we got thorns in the flesh. We got problems. You know what I'm saying? But we know how to deal. We more um precise with how to deal with it with the scriptures. That's why you got to be you got to learn how to use the sword. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all using this sword here, which is your tongue, sister. That ain't gonna work. You know what I'm saying? Brothers too, brothers. Sometimes you, you trying to use your tongue. Your, that ain't gonna work. You trying to cuss out and all that, that ain't gonna get it done, bro. You gotta learn how to have a piece of like, all right, hey, just cover your head real quick. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to scripture real quick. And not only when when it's something going down, because you got to tell her to cover her head. You gotta tell her to cover her head when she's doing righteous. Let her know she's doing righteous. Give her some scripture. Like, hey, man, I'll pray. I mean, I'll be giving my wife like that. Like, hey, cover your head. she be like, oh, she be like looking crooked, looking confused. Now I read the scripture. Hey, you know what I'm saying? You, you're doing a good job right there. You know what I'm saying? You making sure the house clean, all that food good. You you're doing great. You know what I'm saying? You taking care of the kids, teaching the kids. All praise. Good job. And just keep it moving by my day. You feel me? So you have to do that. You gotta do that Jeremiah one and ten. You gotta learn how to build, plant, root out all those type of things. You know what I'm saying? Not only which is real, but that's with brothers, that's with congregation, leaders of congregation. You gotta do all these type of things. You gotta be that. You can't be one side, you gotta be a whole balance. You gotta be, you know what I mean? So that's what you got to be. I don't know why I'm in up over here, man. Where I'm at? Verse 13. So I'm why I'm here, man? Oh, we're giving it. Okay. All right. These are examples. Right, right, right. These are examples, right? All right. We finished? Yes, sir. All right. Go back. Now we deal with that. So it's because we bringing, the, like I said, we bringing the vacuum clean out so we can get that up out of you because you may have just swept it under the rug. You know, you ain't want to deal with it, but you got to deal with that spirit. Just like we got to deal with covetous. Now let go to covetous. Give me that in um, Second Kings. We're going to. We're going to read a little bit of the history, so read along. Was it 20? Hold on. Second Kings. Yeah. Read that. This is the book of Second Kings, chapter 5 and verse 20. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master has spared Naaman, this Syrian, and not receiving at his hands that which he had bought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. So hold on. Let's, let's, did you read? Let me see. Uh. Read a little bit. Start at verse uh start at verse 17. No, 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 no. Yeah, 15. Yes, sir. Verse 15. And he returned to the man of God. So we finna read about some some um covetousness in the in in the scriptures, right? Uh, we're so things are written the fourth time we're written for our learning. So let's dig into it. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him, and he said. Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. So, Alicia got this brother healed. You know what I'm saying? He got this brother healed just to speed it up, read. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. But he said. As so, so Nahum's like, look, man, take a blessing from me, man. I got you, bro. I got you because I already had brought like 10. What did he say? I brought like some 10 garments or something like that. I may be wrong. 7 or 10 uh, in the scriptures earlier. Uh, uh, start at verse five. Verse five, and the and the king of Syria said, "Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel." And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver. So he took ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold. Six thousand pieces of gold. Let me get, let me get that. Right. Go ahead. And ten changes of raiment. And what? Ten changes of raiment. That brother got a fit, bro. He 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 got t he, he ready. He got a fit for every day, over every day. You know what I'm saying? Three day. He like, man, I got I got I got fits for him. I got how many six thousand? What's that? Six thousand? Oh, six thousand. Six thousand pieces of gold. Right. No man, come on, man. All right, jump over there. Where we at? Verse sixteen. Verse sixteen. 
But he said, as the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. He like, and listen, said, look, now I'm good. I ain't going to take none of that. You straight. Go ahead. And he urged him to take it. So he begged, man, come on, man. Take my, I got 6,000 gold pieces. I take all for you, man. You know what I'm saying? You hear me. You took this leprosy off me, man. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I got you. I got 10 garments, bro. Just take one. Bro, just, just take, you know, you got to take all the gold. You know, just take like a, a hundred pieces or something. Take some. Go ahead. But he refused. And Naaman said, Shall that not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules, burden of earth, for thy servant will henceforth offer no, neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. So he like, look, I ain't going to, I'm done with that sacrifice to other gods, man. I, I want to rock with y'all. Read. In this thing, the Lord pardon thy servant, that when my master go up into the house of Ramon to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Ramon, when I bow down myself in the house of Ramon, the Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. Come on. And he said unto him, go in peace. So he departed from him a little way. So he got on down. Read. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha. So the so Nahum got on down. We got his, he got his 10 garments. He got his 6,000 or what was 6,000 uh, 6, pieces of gold. How much silver? Uh, seven talents of silver. So he got, it, he, he got his stuff and got on down. But what happened? Verse 20. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha. So the brother that was rocking with Elisha. He got on, he, he ran them down. Go ahead. The man of God said, Behold, my master has spared Naaman the Syrian, and not receiving at his hand that which he had bought. <laughs> he said, hey, he pulled up on him. He probably ran him down. I ain't no tell. Hey, he probably ran him down. Like, hell, he probably, in his mind, you know, you know, this is how he was. When um, Alicia was talking to him, talking to Naam, he probably over there like, shit, you ain't gonna get, you ain't gonna get that, um, Six thousand gold? Did you turn that six thousand six thousand six thousand gold? I think it's six thousand gold? You turn it gold? Sit he turned the silver down? Ten gold them got me bad as hell. He turned that down? Shit, what the hell they do? Like what the hell wrong with listen, man? Shit. Well, I need that. I want that. Let me have that, please. He probably like, man, let me get that. What the hell is Alicia doing, bro? Then he said, get that. I right, bet. You ain't wanna get it. I'm finna run him down. So he ran, he ran down on, on your boy. Come on. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. So, I'm going to run after him, and I'm finna get something. Come on. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from his chariot so, to meet him. So he like, damn, what the old dude is? Damn, that's the old dude that was back with Elisha. What the hell? I see what he want. Come on. And said, it's all well. So he like, damn, everything good? Come on. And he said, all is well. My master have sent me, saying, Behold, even now there become to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. So he, he look at it. He said, read verse 22 again. Verse 22. And he said, All is well. My master have sent me. So he said, My master have sent me. So covetousness will make you lie. Co I, I repeat, covetousness will make you lie. It will make you just, you be lying for no reason. Brother asks you why you working on the Sabbath. Oh, man, you know, you're going to run them down something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you covered, you're going to run them down something. Hey, bro, why you why you want that new moon? Oh, man, you're going to run them something. So you be like, damn, bro, you, you got your own business, but you work on the Sabbath? You control your schedule, but you don't, you didn't keep Passover? Mm. You control your own schedule, but you didn't keep it uh, New Moon? Damn. You talking about you got to leave early, you know, sundown, that's New Moon. Then brother be like, yeah, man, I got to get on out of here. What? Bro, don't you on your own bed? Cover just to make you say, look, hey, I got to work, man. Hey, I got I got to go to work. Bro, cover just is something else, man. Not only that, power, all that. You could be covetous in somebody's wife. You feel me? All type of ways you covetous. Now watch this. Keep reading. And he said, all is well. My master have sent me saying, behold. So he lied. He said, my master sent me a list. I ain't sent him nowhere. Even now, there become to me from Mount Ephraim 
two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver. Come on. And two changes of garments. And Naaman said, be content. Take two talents. He said, no problem. I got you, player. I got you. I got you. Be content. Take two garments. Go ahead. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags. And he gave him two um, talents of silver and put him in a bag. Come on. With two changes of garments. Some of y'all want that bag. They go your bag right there. And we, later, hold on, hold on. I'm finna talk a little spill now. I'm finna give a little spill. Brother, be want that bag. Sisters, be want that bag. You in covetousness. You all, I want a bag. I want a bag. Man, you just should pray for you can uh, be free and content to do enough. Matter of fact, get that in the proverb. Let's get a solution real quick. Stop being covetous. I ain't even finished with it, but I just got to go and get it because I might forget. Proverbs 38. This is what combat a covetous spirit. If you got covetous, uh, a covetous spirit as far as on the money side, on the financial side, because covetous is running to everything. Covetous is running to uh, 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 stealing, killing, and running to all that. Watch this, read. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 30 and verse 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. So you got to pray for food convenient for you. What's convenient for him may not be convenient for me. So you got to ask the Lord, look, feed me what you need me to have. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, read. Lest I be full and deny thee. Lest I get too much and I'm up, my feet kicked up on the yard. Boy, I know the Lord. The Lord said, Lord ain't giving me that. I ain't going to never be rich. i never be rich. And I don't want to. But, hey, I know that ain't happening because I would kick my feet up. I know it. I'd be on the yacht. I'd be, I'd be like, you know what? I'm, I'm just on the yacht. They'd be like, where you at? Oh, I'm just on the new yacht. I mean, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't breaking no law, Emma. <laughs> brother, go to talking back and everything. Brother, brother, I ain't never, I ain't never been a, um, a rebuttal person, but since you got that yacht, you be like, shit, I ain't breaking no law. You know, that's the first thing. I ain't breaking no law, is it? What law I'm breaking? What a sin in there, bro? Why you, why you talking about some count one on one? Bro, I ain't breaking no law. Why I got to be a count one on one? You know what I'm saying? Because your feet kicked up on that yacht. You got this strong drink, but you can't tell you nothing. You all way uh, overseas somewhere on your on your little yacht. Wherever you're going, you all on the island from here. You leave here in Mobile, you all in the, uh, on the island. You know what I'm saying? Ain't doing no work. You know what I'm saying? You just, that's covetous. Because the real brothers and sisters, we pray for freedom. I pray that way. I make, you got to make moves in this too. You got to make moves to set you free so you can do the work. That's my goal, to break free so I can do the work full time. If I can do the work full time, sun up, sundown, I do it. You, If I can get up and prophesy in the morning to sundown, but that'd be my job. Because get what? I done did that working for Esau. You got them old jacked up bootleg schedules, graveyard shifts, 3 to 11, 2 to 12, 12 hours a day. We work at 10s now. I hate the 10, 12 hours. That 10 or 12, that's 12. That 12, I'm working 12 hours now. I'm working 12 hours a day. Now you telling me I can't if the if I if I uh, had the opportunity to do it for a truth, I won't do it. Man, you crazy. Man, you crazy. That'd be a dream life. To get up and just prophesy every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? So that's what we pray for. The people trying to get out of captivity, we pray, we pray to, to have a little funds to break break free. I don't want to be stuck here in Babylon. You can have this damn place. It's finna burn the hell up. So what the hell look like I want to I wanna enjoy this? I don't want to enjoy that. I want to go home. So the Lord going to keep it foot on my neck, per se. I know. Because they keep following me. It keep me rolling. It keep me going, grinding. It keep me pushing hard because I want this place to go down. But if if not, then I be feet kicked up somewhere. I ain't going to go hard. I be going 40%. Then they're going to end up to 20%. Then they're going to end up, you might get your ass put to death. Because you're going to get put to death. You can't go backwards if y'all don't know this and it's true. I ain't no such thing as going backwards. When you go backwards, you finna you done. I done seen plenty of brothers fall out the truth. I done seen plenty of brothers. I be like, look, hey bro, man, what you doing? I don't see you nowhere, bro. I don't see you traveling. I don't see you do none of that. Oh man, I'm working, I'm working. I got this. I got that. The next next blitz or next event I'm somewhere. Bro, where you at? Oh man, I'm working. I'm doing this. It's the same excuse. Down the brother's gone. Take him and his old family just to lead off of telegram is gone. You already, because you, you can't go backwards, bro. You cannot go backwards. You can't be stagnant either because that's going backwards. Like they said, if you ain't gaining, you're losing. So now where I'm at? Verse 9. Go back. Verse. Go back second. Now, let's read that. Read it. Yes, sir. Verse 9. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal. Unless you be poor, now you got to finesse. 
You got to lie. You got to steal. You got to you gotta come up with some type of play because you ain't got nothing. Come on. And take the name of my God in vain. You just doing whatever. You disrespecting the Lord. You break any law to get what you got to get because you poor as hell. So, Lord, don't make me that poor where I got to be like that. And don't make me rich where I, I'm, I'm going to act like I don't know you. So, feed me convenient for me. Covet his brothers and sisters. Now, go back. Yes, sir. Second Kings chapter 5 and verse 23. And Naaman said, Be content and take two talents. And he urged him, and bound two talents of silver in two bags, with two changes of garments, and laid them upon his two and laid them upon two of his servants, and they bare them before him. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Y'all probably ain't catch that. Y'all ain't catch it. Y'all ain't. Somebody put up there what happened just then. What happened just then, y'all? What happened just then? <laughs> Y'all ain't even catch that little one right there. Y'all y'all missed it. Read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 24. And when he came. Matter of fact, read 23 too because I watched this. Gonna, I wanted to go together. Yes, sir. Verse 23. And Naaman said, be content. Take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and laid them upon two of his servants. And they bare them before him. So they he laid it upon his servants. Do y'all remember what happened in verse 23? Read verse 23 again. I just want to go through it. Read verse 23 again. Verse 23. Verse 22. And he said, all, all is well. My master have sent me, saying, Behold, even now there become to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophet. He said two young men. Now he's giving us a story, y'all. He said two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee. A talent he said, give this to them. Hey, don't he didn't say give it to him. He didn't say give uh let me have that. Let me get that. He said, look, I know the sons of two what he said, sons of two prophets. Mm -hmm. Give this to them. Come on. I pray thee a talent of silver and two changes of garments. And Naaman said, Be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments. And laid them upon two of his servants. So he laid it upon two of the servants. Come on. And they bare them before him. So they took they took the, the bags. They had, they had the bag of money and the garments. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand. Oh, wait a minute. So when they get to their spot, hey, bro, let me get that. Hey, hey give me them garments, man. Give me them bags, bro. Appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, let me have that. So the man, this man here, did he saw how falsely this man dealing? The man dealing falsely because he covetous. Read. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house. And he let the men go and they departed. So wait a minute. The man gone, he departed. He got the bag and he got the garments. Read. Verse 25. But he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha so said. So now he pulled up. He pulled up to listen now. Let's see what let's see what's shaking. And Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? So it looks like, hey. What you got going on, bro? <laughs> Where you coming from, man? Go ahead. And he said, thy servant went no wither. Oh, man, you know, man, I ain't man nothing. Chilling. <laughs> hey, I ain't did nothing. I'm chilling, man. I ain't nothing shaky, man. I'm cooling. I ain't nothing. I ain't been nowhere, man. I'm just chilling, man. I ain't nothing. Man. Ain't nothing happened. Watch this. And he said unto him, went not thou, went not my mind, heart. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 26. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee? He said, wait a minute now. You don't think my mind's with yours? Come on. When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee. When you ran that man down and he got off his chariot to meet you, so you don't think I know that? You don't think I ain't seen that in the spirit? Go ahead. Is it a time to... Hey, that's why you can't play with leadership, bro. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, tell you stay in the spirit. You be like, you be like, <laughs> you be like damn, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? So, hey, you think leadership don't be seeing what be shaking? Nah, they see, man. Man, he's spirit. Everything's spiritual, man. Everything is spiritual. You can't hide nothing. Brother, you can be, I can look, you can sometimes you look at brother see what, what's popping. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gotta tell me nothing. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse 26. And he said unto him, Went not my heart with thee? When the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is it is it a time to receive money? And to receive garments. He says it's a time to do that. It's a reason why I ain't do that. But you messed all that up. Read. 
Is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and manservants and maid servants? The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee. So the leprosy I got off Naaman, now shall it be upon you, since you so covetous. You can have that plague. Go ahead. And unto thy, and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence as a leper, as white as snow. You understand what I'm saying? So we can't be covered. Lord, a plague your behind. You want what somebody wants so bad? Okay. Then you get plagued with that joint. Oh, I got to go to one more cover just one. Yeah, we, we was going over. I remember we was going over that. <laughs> get uh, judges. Hey, these folks, so, there was so much coverage right here, bro. This this right here on a whole nother level, boy. Uh, judges. What was it? Mm, I think it's 13. Hold on one second. Bear with me, y'all. I think it's, uh, I think 13. No, not 13. Not 13. Or is it 17? Yeah, 17. Matter of fact, start at verse 1 because we still going to deal with some sisters at the same time. Watch this. Read. This is the book of Judges, chapter 17. We're going over covetous. We're going to get the rest of them later. We're, gonna, we're just going to give some, some, some example of being covetous. Watch this. Read. The book of Judges, chapter 17 and verse 1. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Michael, and he said unto his mother, the 1,100 shekels of silver that were taken from thee. So Michael said, look, mama, the 11,000 shekels, excuse me, the 1,100 shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou cursed, by what you cussing, she going ham in there. Who the hell took my, who the hell took my money? Who the hell, what my money? What happened to my money? She cussing and everything. Read it again. You know that's a sister right there, boy. And he said unto his mother, the 1,100 shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou curses. Then you going, you going in about this money. Read. And spake of, of also in my ears. You talking all this in my ear. Who got my money? Where my money at? Watch this. Behold, the silver is with me. I took it. I took it. This dude took This man stole from his mama. <laughs> This man is stole from his mama. He's like, look, I can't take this no more. You just, you, you cussing and fussing. Mama, look, I took it. Dang. Watch it, read. And his mother said, blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. And when he, blessed be thou. Why she ain't rebuke this dude? Because she ain't right neither. Read. Verse 3. That's some of y'all women don't want to correct your um, kids. You, you don't want to correct your kids. You want to let them do what they want to do. And No, you making a monster. Watch this, read. And when he had restored the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand. So wait a minute, y'all. She said, look, I dedicated this money for the Lord. But let's see is that the truth. She said, I dedicated this money. This 1,100 shekels of silver I dedicated to the Lord. Let's see what she is she telling the truth. I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a motor image. Wait a minute now. Did she just say she dedicated it to the Lord? She ain't that. She dedicated to Caesar Bow. That was uh that was that was uh Pastor Tide money. Wow. <laughs> that was Pastor Tide money she had put up the eleventh the, the eleventh anniversary for uh, uh Pastor. They were, they were for, they were for uh, Creflo Dollar, uh, 60, how much was it? 1,100 shelf. No, I'm talking about uh, the Creflo Dollar jet. How much that jet was? I forgot. Some millions. That was that money. I'm talking about she somehow dedicated to the Lord. Yeah, you in idolatry, just like today. We, to make a That's right there. Is a, that's a church household right here, boy. You want to fast forward today from this time to that time? From I mean, from that time to this time? This is a Christian church mama, son that's a thief and uh, breaking the law and don't get no correction. And she, he stole the money. He stole the pastor's money. And he gave the pastor's money back. And then she went and dedicated it to the pastor. Mm. <laughs> Go ahead. To make a graven image and a motor image. Now, therefore, I will restore it unto thee. Yet he restored the money unto his mother. And his mother took 200, 200 shekels of silver and gave them to the founder, who made thereof a graven image. Graven image, come on. And a molten image. Come on. And they were in the house of Michael. So we breaking the law already. 
that shall not have no other God before me. Then you're breaking the second. When you're making an image and you bind down the worship, read. And the man Michael had in the house of gods and made it. So now guess what he ended up doing? Being a better version of his mama, of being in idolatry and wickedness. Now he got idols all over the place, read. And the man Michael had in the house of gods and made an ephod and a teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. So he made one of his sons to become one of his priests. Come on. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Uh-oh, what they let y'all know what was going on, fam? It was pure wickedness going on. When they said what? Read that again. In those days, there was no king in Israel. When no, when no guidance, when no correction coming out. Come on. But every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Come on. And there was a young man out of Bethlehem, Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. And the man departed out of the city of Bethlehem, Judah. Come on. To, so, to sojourn. Y'all bear with me. I want y'all to catch this, read. Where he could find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Michael, as he sojourned. So he pulled up to Michael's house. Read. And we know Mike, Michael's house full of uh, idolatry. Read. And Michael said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah. Uh -huh. And I go to sojourn, where I may find a place. And Michael said unto him, Dwell with me. And be unto me a father and a priest. So he said, look, Mike said, look, hey, hey, just pull up. Don't worry about that. Pull up and stay with me, bro. Watch it, read. And I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year and a suit. So I'm going to pay you by the year. Come on. And a suit of apparel. And I got your clothes. I got you. I'm, I take care of your clothes. Come on. And thy victuals. And I take care of whatever you need, what little necessities you need. I got you. I got, I'm going to give you per diem. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Go ahead. So the Levite went in. So the Levi said, hey, I'll take that. And the Levite was content to dwell with the man. Come on. And the young man was unto him as one of his sons. As Mike, and Michael consecrated the Levite. Come on. And the young man became his priest and was in the house of Michael. Then said Michael, now know that, now know I that the Lord would do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. That's how wicked we was. Jump on fast forward. Jump to verse. I want to get to something. Jump to verse. What day in it? Uh, jump to verse 14. The book of Judges chapter 18. Matter of fact, jump to verse 11. 18 and 11. No, no, no. I want something before that. I want to jump to something before that. Hold on. Verse 7. Yes, sir. The book of Judges chapter 18 and verse 7. Then the five men departed and came to Lish. And said and saw the people that were therein, how they dwelt careless after the manner of the of the Zidonians. So you got some Danites. I think they were Danites. I want to make sure I'm right. Hold on, jump the verse. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Verse one. Yes, first read. Start at verse two. Verse two. And the children of Dan sent of their family five men from their coast, men of valor, from Zora and from Estor. To spy out the land. So you had Danites to spy out the land. Let's show you how that's Dan got wiped out or being exerted to everywhere for a reason. They ain't you know nation no more. Watch this read. Let's see why. Let's see what the Danites was doing. To spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, Go, search the land. Who? When they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Michael, they lodged there. So they pulled up to spy the land out, right? They pulled up on Michael. You know, Michael full of idolatry. He got, he got all type of idols there. He done made somebody a priest and everything, right? Read. Verse 3. When they were by the house of Michael, they knew the voice of the young man, the Levite. So they knew when they pulled up to Michael, they're like, damn, I, we know him. His voice sound familiar. Right. I know him. Read. And they turned in thither and said unto him, who bought thee hither? And what makest thou in this place? He like, who? How you get here? Who brought you here? How you get in this place? Read. And what hast thou here? What the hell you got going on here? And he said unto them, Thus and thus dealeth Michael with me, and hath hired me, and I am his priest. Come on. And they said unto him, As counsel, we pray thee of God, that we may know where the our, where the our way which we go shall be prosperous. So they lying. They, of course they said, they, they, what we used to call it, they making a play. They making a play. Right? So they, they, they making a play. They being this being cunning and deceitful right now read and the priest said unto them go in peace before the lord is your way wherein ye go then the five men departed watch this and came to listen 
and said, and saw the people that there that were therein, how they dwelt careless after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secure. So they were people in the scene saying, look, these folks dwell carelessly. They ain't alert worth nothing. We can, hey, that's why too, we be telling brother, nah, that, I'm going to say that for another time. But you make you got to be on point. Whatever office you're in, you got to be on point. You got certain people that come in and see how you maneuver and how you move. You got to understand, you got to always be on point. Read. And there was no magistrate, magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything. So they had nobody that could check them, read. And they were far from the Zidonians and had no business with any man. Come on. And they came unto their brethren to Zorah and Esther. And now the, jump to verse. I'm getting I'm y'all bear with me. I'm finna I'm finna get to it, y'all. I'm building up. Verse uh 13. Verse 13. And they passed thence unto Mount Ephraim and came. No, 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 no. Verse 11. Verse 11. And there went from thence of the family of the Danites, out of Zor and out of Eshtar, 600 men appointed with weapons of war. So then they went to spot out the land. They were like, oh, man, we can take this place. They ain't got nobody worth nothing here, bro. These men, we can here. They ain't alert or worth nothing. We finna pull up on them. So now they bring six, how many? 600 men. Appointed with weapons of war. So then they, they bring a whole squad with them, read. And they went up and pitch, pitched in Kerjef Jerim in Judah. Wherefore they called the place Manhana Don until his day. Behold, it is behind Kerjef Jerim. Come on. And they passed this unto Mount Ephraim and came unto the house of Michael. So they're back at Michael's house now, remember, right? Come on. Then answered the five men that went to spy out the country of Laish. And said unto their brethren, Do ye know that there is in these houses an ephod and teraphim? You see that they can't spy out. You got to be careful letting everybody in your house. <laughs> you better be careful letting everybody in your house. They, remember, they sent them men in there to spy. And then now they come back saying, Hey, they got this in their house, bro. Remember in the world, you ain't let everybody in your house. You knew Tyrone was still Tyrone. will never come my house, bro. You're going to stay on the front porch, bro. <laughs> You ain't coming to my damn house. You sit your ass outside. You ain't coming to here. Because you get in here and see something you like, you go, you coming through my back door when I'm gone. Dang. So you can't let everybody. They just got back door right here. Now watch this. Read that again. Do ye know that there is in these houses an ephod and teraphim and a graven image and a molten image? Now therefore consider what ye have to do. Come on. And they turned thitherward. And came to the house of the young man, the Levite. So they told the man that spied out, told everybody what was going on, what they had in the house. So now these people finna go see by what was in the house. Read. Even unto the house of Micah, and saluted him. And the 600 men appointed with their weapons of war, which were the children of Dan, stood by the entering of the gate. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up and came in thither and took the graven image. This I covered this. Our people live. They stole graven images. Dang. You pull up in somebody's house to steal a graven image. Read. And took the graven image and the ephod and the teraphim and the molten image. And the priest stood in the entering of the gate. Not only did they take the golden, I mean the um, molten images in the ephod. Not only did they take that. Let's see what else they took that they so covetous. Read. And the priest stood in the entering of the gate with the 600 men that were appointed with weapons of war. And these went into Micah's house and fetched the carved image, the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image. Then said the priest unto them, What do ye? And they said unto him, Hold thy peace. They said, Shut the hell up. <laughs> they told him, Shut, lay it down. Shut up. We don't want to hit nothing. Read again. And they said unto him, Hold thy peace. Lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Man, shut your ass up. Come on. And go with us and be to us a father and a priest. So wait a minute. These folks took the graven image and they took the whole body. They took a priest. They said, no, nah, you come on up. Not only are we going to take the gold, the, the uh, molten image, but here we're going to take the priest too. <laughs> yeah, that's some covetous on another level, bro. Come on. It is better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man. Or that thou be a priest unto us, a tribe. Is it better for you to be a priest to one man? Or is it better for you to be a priest to all us Danites? Read. Or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family in Israel. Come on. And the priest's heart was glad. Look and how simple this dude is. Come on. And the priest's heart was glad. And he took the ephod 
and the teraphim and the graven image and went in the midst of the people. So they turned and departed. So now when you covetous, you see in here, they were so covetous that they lied, they plotted, they stole, and I'm going to show you, they will murder. So covetous spirit covers a plethora of other sins, hatred, all that. Now watch this. I'm going to show you that real quick and then I'll move on. Verse, uh, let's get to it, verse 22. Verse 22. And when, they were good, and when they were a good way from the house of Michael, the men that were in the houses near to Michael's house were gathered together and overtook the children of Dan. And they cried unto the children of Dan. And they turned their faces and said unto Michael, What a lie of thee that thou comest what with a lie of thee. What a lie of thee that cometh with such a company. And he said, Ye have taken away my gods, which I made, and the priests, and ye are gone away. And what have I more? And what is this that ye say unto me? What a lie of thee? Watch this. So now I told you, uh, covetous come with lying. We already read proof that. Uh, stealing. Uh, and if it'll come with one more, watch this. Verse 25. And the children of Dan said unto him, Let not thy voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows run upon thee. And those. What that sound like, brothers and sisters? Read it again. Yes, sir. And the children of Dan said unto him, Let not thy voice be heard among us, lest angry, the angry fellows run upon thee, and thou lose thy life with the lives of thy household. That's a murder spirit. That's a murder spirit. Covetousness breed a lot of different spirits. So, brothers and sisters, let's not be covetous because that's murder right there. They say, look, man, shut up for I had somebody run up on you, bro. I had somebody come murk you, bro. Now, give me that in Acts 5. We deal with covetous real quick. Time running down. Just want to show you about these spirits. Now, give me Acts 5 and what it is. You know what I want. Right. Just start at verse 1. Yeah. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and bought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Come on. Whilst it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Come on. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. You ain't lied to men, but you lied unto God. We got to watch these spirits. We got to get this leaven out of us. The covetousness, the uh, the lying, the stealing. We got to get these things out of us. We got to purge these things out of us. We come out of the world, and it was all on us when we was in the world. We was quick to lie. You, you will steal. You will kill. You will do all these type of things. So we got to purge that living out of us, not only at our house, but out of our bodies. Read. Verse 5. And Ananias, hearing the, these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound, wound him up. Real quick. Now give me 2 Samuel. We running out of time. Give me 2 Samuel. Uh, start at verse 2 Samuel 12. Showing you these different spirits that we got. We can't just sweep them under the rug. We got to deal with them. 2 Samuel 12 and verse uh, verse 3. Book of 2 Samuel. Well, verse 1, man. We got to read. I'm sorry. Read one. Yes, sir. Book of 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 1. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a seed. So he about to give a parable to David real quick. We already know the story. Come on, read. The rich man had a seed and many flocks and herds. So the rich man had a whole lot of going on, read. But the poor man had nothing, save one little ewe, lamb. Come on. Which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew up together, together with him and with his children. It did eat of its own meat and drink of its own cup and lay in his own bosom and did worse and was unto his own. Hold on, sorry. And was unto him as a daughter. Come on. And there came. So that, in other words, this brother took care and cared for this one the thing he had in, in his possession, which is referring to his wife, right? David had everything. He's the rich man. It's the poor man. Come on. And there came a traveler unto, unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him. 
but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. Come on. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. So I bring this out because David didn't see himself. He had somebody else to come. Somebody else had, the Lord sent somebody else to correct him and let him know he was in error. So same thing with us. We may slip. Somebody going to come tell you about yourself, whether it be a sister, whether it be a brother. Remember I read earlier about the correction? It ain't, it's of God, you know what I'm saying, to get you to not miss out on getting the kingdom. But if you reject the um the correction, that brother or that sister, then you might, then the Lord trying to deal with you, he might, some something have to happen tragic to you for you to get it, or you may miss it, then he just say the hell with you and bug you out. So we never know if when we never know if the Lord just say, look, I'm going to bug you out. That's why we got to have fear. We don't know, man. We don't know what the Lord created us for. We can only hope and pray what he created us for. But you know what I'm saying? That's why you got to take heed and um, be able to uh, seek out yourself. Read verse five. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said unto Nathan, as the Lord liveth. The man that have done this thing shall surely die. So David said, I want, man, that man should be put to death that did that. Now watch this. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Come on. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man that saith the Lord God of Israel. I anointed thee to, I anointed thee king over Israel. He said, you the man, you the one, you that, you that rich man that messed with that poor man, um, um, lamb, you that rich man. It's on you. David didn't see himself, so we could be in this truth. Sometimes we not we don't see ourselves. That's why when brothers correct you, you got to always hearken and listen to it. You may think it's, you need to listen. So to correct you, you need to pay attention because you may not be seeing yourself in that moment. Right? I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee. Thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom. So I could I gave you everything. Come on. And gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that and if that had been too little, I would moreover. Even if you didn't have enough, David, I would have gave you whatever you wanted. Come on. I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. And has taken his wife to be thy wife, and has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from thy house. So that was his judgment, right? So just let you know, I just want to bring it out, showing that you may not see yourself. Now uh, get that um the first Samuel was 16 and 14, and we're gonna end up we winding down on it. We wind down on the time. Uh first Samuel 16, 14. It's the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16 and verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. So we don't know uh, if this happened to you, the spirit of the Lord would depart from you. And what happened? But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. When you don't want to fix your error, when you don't want to look in the mirror, after a while, you don't have an evil spirit on you. And the Lord is going to say, look, I, I, I'm out. <laughs> Read. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now. A evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord not command thy servants, which which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player player on the heart. That's good right there. Just showing you the evil spirit would jump on you. That's why, you know, we got to uh, not only get the leaven out of our house, but we got to pay attention to the leaven that's within us. That we the same way that we very detail on reading the back of the box. We got to be very detailed in our spirits on making sure we examine ourselves. Psalms um, 139 and 23. Psalms one, um, 139 and 23. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 139 and verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. See that? That's the prayer we should be doing. That's what we should be saying, bro. We got to always read that again, man. That's yes, sir. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Now, search search you out. Search me, O God. Search me out. You got to search yourself out. It's a lot of stuff in there. It's a lot of crumbs under the mat. Like when you had to vacuum your car. It was a lot of crumbs under there you didn't get. You know what I'm saying? In that full detail. You just, you know, on a regular basis, you just, you know, straighten up a little bit. But now, when you pull them mats up, 
you get up under them, the seat, look up under that seat, under that, you got you got stuff everywhere. You want to deal with all that. Same thing with us on our spirit. We got to deal with that. Read it again. Yes, sir. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. And lead me in the way of everlasting. Because if we don't get that out of our flesh, Job 34, two more scriptures and I'm out. We got to get that out. We got to get it out. Job 34 and start at verse 10. If we don't get this out of our flesh, watch what happens. This is the book of Job chapter 34 and verse 10. Therefore hearken unto me, ye men of understanding. For be it from God. So listen, you men of understanding, you women of understanding, that he should do wickedness and from the all from Almighty, that he should commit iniquity. For the work of a man shall render unto him. So whatever you do, whatever work you're doing, he's gonna render to you. Read. And cause every man to find according to his way. Whatever you're doing is gonna find according to how you're dealing. Read. Yea, surely God will not do wickedly. Neither will the Almighty pervert judgment. So the Lord ain't going to pervert judgment. He's going to give you exactly what you deserve or what you were doing in your life. Read. Verse 13. Who have given him a charge over the earth or who have disposed the whole world. Mm -hmm. If ye, if he set his heart upon men, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath. If if the Lord decided, like we just read in um, 1 Samuel 16, 14, where he said he took his spirit. Read that again. If he set his heart upon men, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath. If he take that spirit from you and then he take your breath. All flesh shall perish together and man shall turn again unto dust. You're going to be number dust if, if we ain't got the Lord with us, bro. We ain't going to be number dust if the Lord decides to say, look, give me that spirit. Bro, we, we done. We fried. Now, who wants that? I know damn well I don't want it. So you telling me I got to look in the mirror and examine myself with well, damn it, I'm looking. So I pray, brothers and sisters, do the same. Give me that uh, one more, what I said, uh, 2 Corinthians 4. And start at verse, I think it's, uh, read verse 1 first. Yes, sir. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4 and verse 1. Therefore, sin, we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not. So we should not faint. Read it again. Therefore, sin, we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not. Since we receive mercy, we shouldn't faint. You know what I'm saying? And most people just think, uh, you know, this don't apply to me or you because we teach. Hell no, give me that in Job 4. And, and I know I said I, I got a precept this, y'all. Because it said faint not. Give me that in Job 4 and 3. Well, it's, it's maybe 4 and 4. Yes, sir. Showing you that hell. I'm in the same fight, y'all, and we in the same fight at this thing together. Read what you got. The book of Job chapter 4 and verse 3. Behold, thou hast instructed many, and thou hast so I don't want to be the one that instruct many. Come on, and thou hast strengthened the weak hand, and you strengthened the weak hand. Somebody probably about to fall out the truth, or they, you know, they 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 couldn't go forward in some aspect. Read, thy words have upholding him, and your words have built this man up or built this sister up that was falling, that they was falling, they were slipping, they was they they were falling out of this truth, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees, but now. It has come upon thee. So now it come upon me. I, I've been teaching, but now it come upon me. And thou faintest. And I faint. Hell no. That's it. Mm. It touch of thee, and thou art trouble. It touched me now the trial that I, I up, um that I built you up on. Now the same trial jump on me, and I end up fainting. Hell no. It ain't working like that. Let you know we locked in together too. We striving to get the kingdom. You feel me? Go back. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4 and verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. We faint not. Come on. Verse 2. But have renounced the hidden things of this honesty. Jump to verse 7. That's what we have done. We renounced the hidden thing of our own speed through it because I'm already out of time. Verse 7. Verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthly, earth, earthen vessels. Come on. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled. On every side. So we troubled on every side. Read. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We perplexed, but we not in despair. Come on. Persecuted, but not forsaken. We per persecuted, but the Lord's still with us. Come on. Cast down, but not destroyed. We cast down, but it ain't over with. Always bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus. Uh -huh. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So we want, we want 
the life of the Lord to be manifest in our bodies. Meaning what? Without that spot, without that blemish when we read it earlier. But we got to be that sacrifice. But we got to be that, that sacrifice that get that little leaven out of there. Because that little leaven rise. You think you can sweep it on the rug. But guess what? That little leaven will rise and overtake the rug in you too. If you don't deal with it. You got to deal with everything. Most of the stuff we tell. I used to say all the time. Uh, folks ask me uh, about enduring. Okay, boom. And I, uh, I say, look. Like on the ability board, I would say I deal with this first, that first, that's stronger, that's all the way down to verse 10, right? Number 10, right? But guess what? But guess what Satan going to try to use to get you out? He going to try to get the number 10 thing that you think is the least. Number 9, he going to use that. You focus on lust up here. You focus on that up there. But then he'll hit you, he'll hit you low on some stuff you, ain't even, you don't even read on. You don't even study on. You don't even, you, you never, I never, you ain't never deal with coverages. And that may not have been your spirit. But guess what? When you come into the truth, that's what Satan going to hit you at. You, cause we already got love, man. We're gonna, yeah, yeah. We, no doubt, we gotta fight. You gotta pay attention up there. But if he know you up there, and you ain't down at the bottom working on a little stuff, what you would call little leaven, that little leaven gonna rise up and take you out the truth. It's like a setup. It's almost like chess. Yeah, I'm gonna let you see this move over here, but this ultimate move is what I'm trying to get, hit you with over here. So you got to be mindful with that little leaven. That little leaven will rise. Go ahead, read. Yes, sir. Verse eleven. For we which live our way, or our way, deliver unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. We got to make it in our mortal flesh. We got to get that spirit. We got to get that life in our mortal flesh, meaning we got to fight and to make sure the spirit, like bitches say, stay in the spirit. But we got to stay in the spirit of Christ. Because if not, we're going to be in the spirit of, excuse me, we're going to be in the flesh of Tyrone. We're going to be in a, a flesh of a thought. We're going to be in a flesh of a covetous brother. We're going to be in a flesh of a, a wicked sister. A, um, running your husband type of sister. If you're not in the spirit, you're going to end up being in the flesh. Read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 11. For we which live are our, our way deliver unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. We want that in our mortal flesh. Come on. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. The death working in us, but life in us, because Christ in us. Come on. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which is raised up, the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus. So we shall raise up too. Come on. And shall present us with you. Come on. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many. Hold on. That through the. Hold on, I'm sorry. Verse 15. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Come on. For which cause we faint not. We faint not, so we can't fight. That's why I said never give up, never give in. We can't faint. Faint meaning what? You lose consciousness. You know what I'm saying? You was you was rolling, but then you lost consciousness. Because if I go to talking somebody, they they was they was up, but after a while, when I talk them enough, they faint. They don't know what the hell happened. So that's like us. We can't just faint in this truth when trials come, when when somebody trying to choke us, or when Satan choking us, or when his flesh trying to choke us. We can't faint. Read. For which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish. Yet the inward the outward man gotta gotta be put to death. That flesh gotta go down. Read. Yet the inward man, the spirit, is renewed day by day. We got to renew that spirit every single day. Examine yourself. Get that little bit of living out your house. And I'm talking about your spiritual house. Read. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So we got this little affliction in our body. It's just light. But it said, which is but a for a moment. That's for a little moment. It said, working for us a far more exceeding. And a eternal weight of glory, meaning the kingdom, read. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things it which said, are while we look not at the things which are seen, we aren't supposed to be focused on the things that's going on. That's why it's like you said in Colossians, whether there's three and five, about the uh set your uh, afflictions above, not on the earth. Same thing. We can't when we're going through stuff, we can't we gotta learn how to fight. We gotta learn how to on uh, war. In the spirit, we got to learn how to look, not let the trials get to you, but know that let the Lord got you going through this for a reason so you can stand tall. It's spiritual, not physical. Read. 
While we look not at the things which are seen. The things that's going on in our flesh, what we see, that get us emotional, read. But at the things which are not seen. Come on, we're supposed to be looking on the things that are not seen, meaning the kingdom of heaven, come on. For the things which are seen are temporal. The things that are for us in our flesh is just temporary. Come on. But the things which are not seen are eternal. The things that we don't see that it, which in the spirit is for eternal life. So I pray, brothers and sisters, get something. I had to rest the class, but all praise to the Most High. Uh, I pray that brothers and sisters are having a, a wonderful Passover. But like I said, but make sure that Passover is you getting that leaven out uh, of your house. And I'm not talking about your physical house at, the, at home because you've already done that. I'm talking about uh, your body, your temple, your mind, your spirit, your soul. You got to get that leaven out. Well, and don't say, oh, it's a little bit of leaven, because I'm telling you, Satan will use that little bit of leaven, and it will rise, and it will overtake everything, and it end up pulling you out the truth. While you got on your top priority, lust, this and that, but the things that you don't, uh, hatred or uh, murmuring, you think that ain't, ain't nothing, they ain't nothing strong. No, it is strong. Treat it as such. Put on the whole arm of God all the way around the board. If not, he's going to slide in through one of those windows, and he'll take your house. So I'll pray to the Most High. I pray that it was edifying to the brothers and sisters. So I'll pray to the Most High. Uh, um, IUIC Mobile. Oh, what we got? Uh, we got an announcement stuff we got to make. Are we good? Oh, subscribe. Hey, Rapid Fire. We got Rapid Fire here in Mobile. We got some Rapid Fire coming out. Believe that. It's coming. And we're going to have something else, too. We got some other stuff. We got Action Pastor. Uh, so make sure y'all subscribe to IUIC Mobile. We got a lot of stuff coming. You know, we finna, we got to turn it up. You understand what I'm saying? So I'll pray to the most high. Shout out to the um, bishops. You know, I'll praise man. Bishop work hard, man. Y'all understand the bishops don't be putting in bricks, man. Uh, the deacons, the captains, you know, they put in bricks. So I'll praise for those spirits, you know what I'm saying, uh, to help build uh, not only me, but the whole body. You understand what I'm saying? And the faith of Christ. So. I'll pray to the Most High. Never give up, never give in. I'll pray to Shalom, Most High, Christ bless. Hey, Shalom. Yeah, here we go. Tell me open my headphones. Yeah. Look. You are now flying. Look, look, look. They don't want the smoke now. They don't want the smoke. Want the smoke now. They don't want the smoke. Smoke now, they don't want the smoke.